Hi right, guys, uh, just following on from the last video uh, where I tried to explain uh, how I've implemented a, a serial interface to the uh, core memory. Uh, what I failed to mention in, in the last video was I've uh, uh, connected an LED uh, to the output of the very last shift register, which was the test I did today. Um, was basically powering up the whole module, um, which it didn't burn up, so that's a, a good thing. Um, and just by shifting, uh, well, I've, I've alternately shifted zeros and ones through the whole chain of shift registers, and the last LED there was just a test that the bit made it through. Um, so just the little demo that I'll show in this video. Uh, apparently, the the 74HC164 seemed to like to start up full of ones um, in the start of the program that I've got running so far. The 595s are reset at startup time. So um, basically when the main program runs, we'll have 32 ones followed by uh, 16 zeros in the 74HC595 registers. And when I start rotating alternate bits through, we'll see uh, a clock pulse from the, the Aqua LED. And then uh, this is a little orange LED mounted underneath the board. Um, which will uh, stay set for the first, uh, well, sorry, stay clear for the first 16 clock pulses to shift these zero bits through. Then for the next 32 clock pulses, assuming the the, the bits are all going to be set to one at startup again, uh, we'll, we'll see 32 consecutive ones come out of the indicator. And then after that, we'll start to see the new bits that, that the program rotated through uh, so once 48 bits in total have been shifted, uh, then we'll start to see alternating bits, and that was enough to test that the shift registers work. Uh, they have to be powered, they can't be shorted, data and clock signal has to be arriving okay, so does the latch because I've reset. Uh, well, actually, I don't know the latch works because I don't, can't see the output uh, of the 595s yet. The clear probably does work, given that the rest of the shift registers like to start in a one state and uh, the other two uh, are clear so I'm guessing the reset is working because I do that at the start of the program. Okay guys so roughly in the middle of the screen uh, maybe it'll appear to the little of the left of the power connector uh, with the red and black wire uh, is where the, the orange LED is mounted and it wasn't something I was supposed to see uh, other than testing so I'll we'll power up now uh, we do see an orange light that's always on. Uh, the aqua LED up the top there is, is signaling clock pulses. And we could, we've already seen the, the orange LED turn on for the ones. And it'll start to alternate in a little while. It's just underneath the uh, red and black wire as it comes out of the little plug. And it's just started to alternate now as the, the alternate bits have made it through. Um, so it was great that the thing didn't start fire. because. Uh, uh, this was one of those times I didn't really test uh, every board uh, as I made it. I, I did test for shorts and continuity where it should be, so I know the core module is uh, continuous where it should be and, uh, and is not shorted to any other pin. Uh, same with all these modules. Um, it's probably the, the biggest thing I've done, 15 chips, without a, a proper you know, uh, software and, and functionality testing. So it's good that I know that most of one half of this module works now, so the next thing will be to, to plug in the little LED test board over there, uh, determine that I've made all the right connections, and if not, I can uh, correct them in software. And away we go. So the next thing will be to test these, uh, the current drivers, the TI chips. So once the, uh, the shift registers are set, we'll have a, a bit in the... Uh, enable pins that we want and we'll latch it and uh, in the the 74 HC164s uh, we'll have a 0 and a 1 uh, at the input 1A and, and 2A and then we'll turn the enable pin on and then we'll have the high current output uh, with the state of each end of, of this wire uh, depending on whether we have a, a 0 or a 1 at the uh, outputs and Oh, sorry, the inputs, the low current logic inputs, which switch the, the outputs. Um, 
So given that, we could have a, uh, oops, a positive here and negative here and have current flow in this direction or the other way around. We could have positive here, negative here and current flow in the other direction. In reality, we would have another wire uh, to set the, the core memory, the ferrite B. We'd have a half current flowing through this wire and the other half current flowing through this wire in the same direction to flick uh, the, the, uh, the magnetic magnetization in the other direction, clockwise or counterclockwise. Uh, the way the test board works is we take these two points here. Uh, so we'll say that's uh, the output of one of the TI chips. Uh, we've got our current limiting resistor for the LEDs and then we'll split off and we have uh, two LEDs in uh, opposite polarity. So depending, uh, a bit of a dodgy circuit, uh, depending on the direction of current we'll have one of these LEDs lit and the other not. Uh, so if we go this way we'll have this LED lit. If we have current this way we'll have this LED lit. If we uh, don't enable the pin have nothing we'll have both LEDs off or another state that, that can exist which is uh, useless and shouldn't be really happening in, in a practical situation. We could have both ends positive or both ends negative which should result in, in no current flow at all. Um, this was the, the scenario I was alluding to in the first video. I could have tied all the enable pins together set all of, all of these high current drivers to all negative except for the lines I wanted and then switch them on. Uh, but was I sure that if I switch these both negative there wouldn't be some propagation or lag and cause any sort of glitch across the core that I didn't want to affect so I ended up making the decision to control all enable lines individually. Uh, so I guess the next thing to do, yeah, move on to the, the LED test board and Away we go.